Hi, my name is Kevin Thomas, W1DED. Today I'm with November Uniform 1 Delta, Seth Jones. He's a young ham radio operator from Maine that I've met on the air. He's actually contacted me a couple times down at VP5, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Seth, thank you for joining me. Yeah, Kevin, thank you so much for having me. So tell me about your background, Seth. I know you uh, got licensed young, but what was that journey like? Yeah, so I I got interested in amateur radio when I was young, about... Uh, 11 years old and uh i have a friend whose dad is a ham radio operator and i went over there a lot of times and his dad showed me all of his equipment i was really into it i was immediately hooked and uh soon enough i i wanted to get my license so a couple years later when i was 13 this was in april of 2023 i uh i had studied enough took my test online and uh passed my tech uh, technician license exam. Later that same year in August, I upgraded to general and started exploring the world of HF and had a great time there for a while. I was using very simple equipment from a, a small neighborhood home, so I didn't have a lot of space for antenna setup. I was using a ham stick and 100 watts uh, with a Yezu radio, uh, but it, it worked and I made contacts around the world. And this year, early in Early in January of 2025, I got my extra exam and re very recently got my vanity call sign, November Uniform 1 Delta. So other than that, it's been a great journey so far, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for what's to come in the future years. So I'm always interested in talking to young people that get their ham radio license to understand the motivation. And I ask the same question of many people, so I apologize. But with the pull of the internet and gaming and iPhones, what was it that interested you about ham radio? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure, you know. I like doing all the things you just mentioned, including amateur radio. It's, I, I'm very different from most kids my age. And, you know, there's not a lot of people that I know that are my age that are into it. But I do know some. And, you know, I, I don't know if I can give a 100% straight answer here, but I, something about talking to people around the world, bouncing a signal off the atmosphere and... Uh, you know, making worldwide relationships with other hams and uh, being being in a group of very elite operators that can communicate freely across international borders from the safety of our own, own home using our own equipment. It, it's something that really inspired me and uh, something I wanted to learn more about as I continue my journey uh, with Amateur Radio. So Seth, I know that mentoring was an important step in you getting your license. Tell me about that. I think it was one of your friend's dads who was a ham radio operator. How did that conversation start and how did he help you get your license? Yeah, so he actually helped me and uh, his two sons, which I'm friends with, get our licenses uh, back in 2023 and 2022. So, you know, when I went over there to hang out with those guys and, you know, have sleepovers and whatnot, he took us on little uh, adventures and we played around with uh, uh, little Yagi beam antennas on two meters and uh, found little repeaters in the area and started making contacts like that and uh, he introduced us to a, a bunch of different electrical concepts how different antennas worked and I was immediately hooked so I, I would watch lots of videos on radios when I was home by myself and when I figured out how to start studying through an online course in uh, in 2022 so it took about uh, five months of not very consistent studying but definitely studying over time to eventually uh, take my license test and, and pass it. And what about club activity? I know that you belong to a club in the Portland area. Did you become a club member right away? And was that helpful? Yeah. So those guys, they're, they're all great. Uh, one of my Elmers who told me about a parks on the air activation they were going to be doing down in Cape Elizabeth, right on the coast. Uh, he told me about it and my dad and I went down and I got to meet all those guys. Uh, I got to operate on the radio and got to log on the laptop they were using, which was a real privilege. We were using a, a, a three element tri-band Yagi antenna up about 10 meters, which was really great. And then a Elcraft K3, which is a, an amazing radio. So I got to be on 15 meters for a while. But uh, that was a fun Parks on the Air activation. Those guys all welcomed me into their club. They were really inspired by the fact that I'm, I was a young ham radio operator at the time. And uh, that same year in June, because the POTA activation was in May, 
In June, I went down for the field day event, which was really fun. I didn't get to stay the night, uh, but I got to go for a little while, a couple hours, and, and watch those guys set up. What they had a they had a Morse code trailer, and uh, a sideband trailer, a digital trailer, and it was amazing. They had these towers up, and uh, it was really fun to see all those guys again. It was fun to meet some new guys in the club, and uh, they they were all happy to see me. So even though I didn't get to stay for a long time, I still had a blast and. Um, I think recently it was for it was for Winterfield Day. I went down in I think it was December, and uh, we were at a little EMA trailer at uh, an emergency town station. Uh, so I got to do some Winterfield Day activities, which was fun. Saw a couple guys from the club, and uh, each time I've gone to these club events, it's it's been amazing, and they they've always been very welcoming for me to uh, come there. And uh, I'm not a, a full member of the club. But that's that will change at some point. I'm a associate complimentary at the moment, but it, it's hard for me to make it to those events because I'm I'm so much further north. They're about a hundred miles south for me, so making it down there is a trip. But when I do, it's it's definitely a fun experience. So when you describe a trailer with a thirty foot tower and tri band Elecraft radio, that must be K one OT Rick's setup. That's right. Yeah, Rick is amazing. Uh, he's he's inspired by the fact that I'm a young ham radio operator and. Operating with his antennas is amazing. Like you, you drive by his house, he's got all these towers up and wires going in the sky. So he's a really, really fantastic and phenomenal ham radio operator, and I enjoy the work he does. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing an activation with Rick at some point. We, we've we talked about it several times. We just haven't put it together, but it's such a great setup with that trailer. And then he built an, an additional trailer with a, uh, a another tower and, and beam combination that he can take to field day and, and other portable operations. So it's you're, you're a lucky guy to have uh, access to that for sure. Yeah, all the guys are great. They're all very smart. And I enjoy getting to uh, meet them over time and get to use the equipment the club provides. And it, yeah, it's been a blast meeting all those guys. So what about modes? Do you operate phone, CW, RIDI? What uh, modes do you typically operate in? So my typical operating mode is sideband. I'm learning CW. I'm more. I'm trying to figure out how to hook up a Morse code keyer to my radio. I use a Yezu 897, so a little bit of an older radio. So figuring out how to use that is uh, it's a challenge for whatever you're trying to do. And digital, like uh, such as FT8 or FT4, I've never done any digital before. I've only done sideband for all my couple years of operating. And uh, I, I feel like sideband is my favorite mode. Um, directly talking to somebody thousands of miles away really uh it inspires me to do better and uh it inspires me to continue uh with amateur radio because there's times where i might fade away from it for a week or two or maybe a month or so i'm just not very active and then a d expedition pops up or a team of rare operators and um i always want to try and make contact with those guys uh and uh yeah I would, I would say sideband, and that's it for now. And hopefully soon I can do Morse code and digital. And what about operating? Do you, you've obviously mentioned parks on the air, that you've done that. Uh, did you enjoy it enough that you'll want to go back out again? And do you get into contesting, DXing? What's your primary focus when you're on the air? Yeah, so I enjoy what you said. I, I really enjoy DXing. I, like, I love working new countries, and uh, I enjoy participating in contests as much as I can. Obviously, with my current station, it's it's just a 100-watt radio and a G5 RV up about 35 feet. It's not a contest station, but it's not, it's enough that I can participate in contests. It's always fun hearing all the bands packed and, and so many people talking over each other. It's it's a fun experience, and uh, you have all these people from around the world just communicating via radio waves at the same time. So I enjoy contesting and getting into the contests as much as I can. I would love to become a big contest operator one day, like I hear the contest crew on here all the time. They're talking about going to um, ZF1A and uh, um, all those guys going to these big contest stations. And I, I always enjoy watching the contest crew come on here because they're very elite guys and they know what they're doing and they're real deal. And uh, even just listening to contest stations operate during big contests like the CQ Worldwide and whatnot on YouTube, just a simple 20-minute video of a contest operator 
operating get what it were two BSIQ, which is which is crazy. I could never do that, and uh, just working so many people at the same time, uh, hundreds of contacts per hour. That inspires me. So, I I enjoy contesting as much as I can, and uh, definitely DXing is are my primary interests at the current moment. Seth, what's your best advice for a young person that would like to get their ham radio license? Or let's, before that, uh, what's your best advice to somebody who, who's interested in ham radio? What would you tell them and how would you get them started? Well, you know, there's probably a lot I could say at the same time here, um, but I don't know where to start with that. Um, I might tell them that it's a rewarding experience. It's something you have for a lifetime. It's uh, you learn you're learning with other people. You have people that can help you. It's like going to school, but for life and doing something you enjoy at the same time. Uh, it's you get to you learn things that not many people know. And like I said before, you you are the only licensed group of people worldwide that can communicate freely across international borders from the safety of their own home using their own equipment. And uh, there's ham radio documentaries. There's people on YouTube that explain stuff and there's courses that give you so many inform so much information and uh, I would just say it's a very rewarding experience the more you participate in amateur radio and there's so many different fields you can go into like it's, it's like science like you can go into science as a major but what kind of science is it physical science is it general science is it uh, it, it was a whatever. Uh, there's so many different fields that people are interested in. I may be interested in only operating sideband, and someone may be only interested in operating FTA and whatnot. So, I would I would just finish off by saying it's a rewarding experience, and if you can think you can do it in the hobby, you can. And uh, you just need to learn how to do it, and you have people that can help you do it. Seth, I know you're a freshman in high school, so you've got a ways before you need to worry about what career you want to pursue. But uh, is there something you have in mind, and is there an intersection with ham radio with that career? Yeah, so actually, when I passed my amateur extra exam on the same video call I was on, I was with the Greater Los Angeles group out in on the West Coast, and uh, one of the guys there, uh, he told me that the ARRL offers scholarships, and uh, you know I might go work with a ham radio business. My parents have told me. If you're really into this, why don't you work with like the FCC and the license department and whatnot? Um, but you know, there's always electrical uh, stuff which goes along with amateur radio very well and circuit design. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do after high school, but something that goes a lot along the lines with uh, being very similar and related to amateur radio for sure. Well, Seth, I've really enjoyed talking to you today, and I appreciate you dealing with the technical challenges that we've had to get this call scheduled. Uh, but we finally made it happen, and I suspect I'll have you back on again in the future after you've put a few more hours on the radio. Yeah, 100%, Kevin. I'd love to be back on here as soon as possible. I'll look forward to seeing this one that's up there. And uh, have fun down there in Turks and Caicos. I'll, if you're on the radio tonight, I'll try and get you. And uh, have fun down there for the rest of your trip. And uh, thank you so much for having me on here. Thank you, Seth. And I'll be on the radio probably tonight and for the next uh, about 15 days. I'll, I'll be here through the WPX contest. So you'll have lots of opportunities. I've been hanging out primarily on 10, 15, and 20. I get up to 40 and 80 once in a while. But please look for me again. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. My name is Kevin Thomas, W1DED, and I've been talking to Seth Jones, November Uniform 1 Delta, another shining example of youth in ham radio. Thank you for joining me.